Hey, everyone. So I just finished reading this book called The Cosmic Serpent by Jeremy Narby. And I got to say, it was a really, really incredible read. I felt it was so good that I want to make a video kind of giving a brief overview of, of what is contained within those pages of that book, as well as some of the realizations that I've had and some of the understandings that I've come to through reading this book. Uh, essentially, this book is about DNA and the origins of knowledge, and it goes into um, a lot of into ayahuasca and how in the Amazon, uh, ayahuasca is used to tap, basically tap into one's own DNA. And that's the reason why if you hear of people that have done ayahuasca properly, um, they a lot of people see snakes. They see fluorescent snakes or they hallucinate snakes. And what these snakes are, people say that's mother ayahuasca. She comes in the form of snakes. Sometimes she comes in the form of jaguar or whatever. But a lot of the time, the most common form that she arrives in or is presented in is in the form of snakes. Usually, um, from what I understand, it's dual snakes, twin snakes. And what that actually represents is our own DNA. So therefore, these hallucinations may very well be projections of our own, very own DNA, which is incredible to contemplate. And it really resonates with me personally. For years, I've thought about the nature of DNA and I've contemplated the existence of knowledge and, and what the, the role of knowledge is, where it comes from, et cetera. And I've always felt the inherent truth behind what the words all knowledge is within you points to. When we say all knowledge is within you, just look inside yourself. When we hear that, know thyself. When we hear that, a lot of people get confused. They're like, what do you mean? It's just a heart and some organs and whatever. No, it, it, what it's talking about, what that statement actually implies is that it's stored in our DNA is all the knowledge that we can ever come to understand on the planet. Our DNA is this profound, vast storehouse of all the information and all the knowledge since the beginning of time. And also this book goes into um, the symbolism of the snake and the twin snake more specifically, and then sim the symbolism of the ladder. What does a ladder represent? What do the like, ropes represent? And the, when you see symbolism of the dual snake, like on the caduceus and things like that, what this actually points to is our DNA. And it might have other implications. It might point to other, other things, but one of the most important and prominent um, aspects that, that these symbols point to, these double snake symbols point to, is our own DNA. And so what this led me to uh, contemplate, or what struck me as I was reading this, is the fact that in society, in mainstream society, we have been programmed to fear snake symbolism, to fear the snake in general, what what a snake is and what it represents, something deadly, something venomous, something something um, evil, you know, the Garden of Eden, this, 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 this satanic creature. And I think that that's completely by design. I feel like they inverted snake symbolism because at one point what this book reveals is, and I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say it correctly or not, but the snake was... Um, essentially propped up as a god figure um, in ancient traditions and ancient cultures. And then uh, it wasn't until the past 1,000 or 2,000 years or whatever that the snake was inverted and it became the enemy. It became something to slay. It became something to annihilate and destroy. It became a symbol of evil. And what comes of this is human beings fearing their own inherent power, their own inherent gifts their own inherent ability to tap in to what they actually are. This infinite collection of, of, of memories and of knowledge that points to our true nature and helps us to take res our responsibility back and to understand how reality works and to align ourselves with what is, what actually is. And then if you, you look at the modern day, the day that we are in right now with the vaccines rolling out and what they're and fluoride and everything else, all of these things that they have been, been injecting into society to suppress our natural ability to intuit, 
to connect with our higher self, with our true self, to connect in general with our own DNA, to activate that dormant DNA that's stored within us, that is just awaiting discovery, awaiting recognition, awaiting resurrection. They don't want that. The system doesn't want that. The dark occult does not want that. The dark occult relies on our DNA staying junk, staying fast asleep, and not being harnessed. So between the food that we eat and everything that we're constantly bombarded with daily, constantly trying to suppress our natural antenna, our natural ability, ourselves, everything, our natural ability to connect with one another, with ourselves, with nature, with life in general. And what has been ruled into this as well, and what has really helped reinforce this suppression of DNA and suppression of these natural gifts that we have, these superpowers that we have, is the snake symbolism, This the inversion of the snake symbolism in general. I mean, you just look at the, the logo in Western medicine, the, the twin snake rising up. People say, oh, it's kundalini, whatever. You know, that's an aspect of it as well. And that, and that very well may have to do with the kundalini rising may very well have to do with DNA as well. I'm not an expert in the subject, but, you know, it'd make perfect sense. If all of knowledge is stored in our, very, our, our DNA, so everything that we come to understand via external sources, all these reflections are just reflecting back what's inherent within, within us, awaiting recognition and awaiting a reawakening. When we wake up, that's literally just what we are. DNA, our DNA is, is reigniting and it's, it's becoming online. It's activating, literally. And that's what prompts the realizations. That is what prompts the clear sight. That's how we are able to recognize patterns, recognize synchronicities, and recognize how the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, speaks to us. Or how we speak to ourselves, really. If you look at higher self just being you and you're just talking to you in flesh. So through this book, it's really helped deepen my understanding of the nature of DNA, the nature of knowledge, and quite frankly, the uses of ayahuasca and, and the use of plant medicine to raise our consciousness and, and come to um, a more robust and more expanded awareness of, of how reality works within and without. And I'm not implying, and the book is not implying, that ayahuasca or uh, plant medicine in general are necessary um, or needed, for that matter, to activate our DNA, to activate that storehouse of knowledge. I don't feel like it is. Although I think that most of us are naturally drawn to these plant medicines, whether it be mushrooms, uh, LSD, ayahuasca, whatever it is. I feel like a lot of people are drawn to them and they do have these experiences and it does help a lot, especially when you use it properly. But I'm not implying that it's necessary or it's needed. So I, I really highly recommend this book. Um, and I don't usually do, obviously, this is my first ever book review. I don't usually do them. But when I do read a really juicy book that's, that's really resonated with me that I just couldn't put down, then I'm going to start uh, giving book reviews for these books. And the last thing I'm going to say is when you see snake symbolism from now on, when you see specifically the dual snakes intertwining or just two snakes in general, when you see that, think DNA and see what comes to you. It, it really helps to shine light on, on what the symbol is actually pointing to. I appreciate you listening to this video. Below this video, I'm going to post a link to a free PDF of uh, Jeremy Narby's um, book, The Cosmic Serpent. Thanks, y'all.